many baptisms a week? Well, we're doing hundreds a week, sometimes even close to a thousand. It's, it's remarkable. The Lord is doing some amazing work here. You're an artist. What do you draw? Pretty much everything I see. But right now, that guy. Josiah, reporter. Greg. Have you had your time in the water yet, Greg? Yeah, I have. You? I'm more of a neutral observer. Ronnie. How do you explain all this? God is saving the hippies. And it's blowing everyone's mind. Because nobody thought the hippies could be saved. Thank you. Well, first, so good to sit down with you. I'm oh, so right excited on. to hear about your faith journey and, and yes. kind of what brought you to this film. Right. But I want to start with this quote, because as I told you, I get so excited when people's heart uh, are very similar to mine. Amen. And you say, in Hollywood, everyone wants to have a superhero movie. But that's all fictitious. Faith is the real superpower. Yes. I love that. Thank you. And you say, my entire life and my entire career has been a faith walk. Uh, tell me more about yeah. that, and, and maybe that's a little bit of how that brought you to Jesus Revolution now. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I'm from uh, Oakland, California, you know, had dreams of one day working in Hollywood and being successful in Hollywood, and, you know, was raised in the church all my life, and people would say, oh, you can't go to Hollywood, you know, that's Sodom and Gomorrah, that's the devil's <laughs> playground, and all those things. And I just said, I got to go where I believe God is calling me. So that took faith, and you know, 18 years old, coming to LA and going to the US, uh, University of Southern California, majoring in business, minoring in film, starting interning in the business at 18 years old, and every step for the past 25 years has been powered by faith. And so when I talked about that quote, I'm like, yeah, Hollywood loves a superhero movie. That's cool, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but you can't put on a suit of iron and fly through, you know, your city. You can't do it. You can try. You know, it, it ain't going to work. You know what I mean? You can't shrink yourself mm -hmm. to the size of an ant yeah. and go fight crime. But you can believe that there is a better day. You can believe in yourself. You can believe in the power mm -hmm. of God and see the impact of that in your life. And so that's what I have seen. And that's yeah. why, you know, I talk about that quote. And to your question, I, it, that's what brought me here. This is, this is a journey of faith. This is the first movie I've acted in. So, you know, it took a lot of faith to believe <laughs> that I could actually do it and do it well. Yeah. You play this uh, time journalist, which is a, a very key part in this film. Um, talk about, you know, there's a lot of prayer asking for another, you know, revolution kind of in this day and era. And it's going to look different, obviously, than what it would look in the 70s. Our world has changed so different. Journalism has changed. Social, uh, social media has changed. Talk about um, kind of that role that you play in this film and maybe what that might look like in 2023. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, this role of Josiah. So I play Josiah, who is a reporter that works for Time Magazine. Uh, he, goes, he goes from New York to L.A. to cover this story. Yeah. You know, there's a report that these hippies, you know, around the country are getting off acid and finding Jesus. And so he goes to L.A. to see what's real and what isn't. And so when you look at the role of Josiah, I wanted to, you know, portray him as someone who was curious, yeah. not so much judgmental, you know, curious with a touch of skepticism, like, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, is this a cult? What is this? And so I kind of come into it asking questions, seeking for understanding. And then by the end of it, you know, because of my experience, I get to a place where I'm transformed. Yeah. And I began to say, wow. This is a revolution. This is a movement. This is true. And so my hope is that, you know, when you talk about today and, mm -hmm. you know, even journalists today, uh, you know, what about approaching, you know, it from a standpoint, your stories and, and different ideas from a standpoint of curiosity? Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, I might be skeptical about the story, but let me see. Let me mm -hmm. see what, what's there for me. And then from that place, be able to uh, report. And so I really wanted to portray that in the film. Mm -hmm. I did not want to come in judgmental. Yeah. I did not want to come in with the conclusion. Yeah. I wanted to come in, like I said, touch of skepticism, but predominantly curious about what this is, so that way I could go on a pl process of discovery. Yeah. So by the time you get, I get to the end and I write the story yeah. and it's the cover story, originally it wasn't going to be the cover story because nobody knew what it was. But once the magnitude of the movement got uncovered through the power of curiosity, it was clear this had to yeah. be the cover story. You know, it's so interesting. You said you, you know, were kind of brought up in a Christian home, and that's my prayer for my kids now. They're growing up in a Christian home, but you don't want them to believe 
you know, because mom and dad believe or because they see it or, you know, you mm -hmm. have to have that, re it has to be real to you. Yes. What was that moment for you? Because again, I'm, I'm sure it's a very similar story when you grew up in a Christian home. You have to still have that sure. own part. Yeah, is there I mean, I, this particular instance that you go, okay, this is why I believe? Yeah, you know, um, it, it was, I would say it was a series of, of events. You mm -hmm. know, I was uh, raised in the church. My mother always made sure we, me and my, I'm the middle child of three boys. Mm -hmm. So my mother made sure we were in the church, you know, all the time. Yeah. And uh, coming out of the death of my father, my father died when I was nine years old. Uh, he had a heart attack at 36. Mm. And so, you know, because we were already in the church, that same year, um, my uncle started a church in East Oakland called Wings of Love, Maranatha Ministries. And being able to be a part of that ministry really gave me an outlet you know, for my, my gifts. And so I just remember being in church and feeling like the pain that I was experiencing from the tragedy of losing my father, but I had a positive outlet mm. for it in the church. And so at a very young age, I think it was probably, if I remember correctly, like a 10 or 11, mm. I said, you know, I want to get baptized. I really felt the call of Christ. I felt the love of Christ. And I said, I want to accept Jesus as my savior and got baptized, uh, you know, at that day and always have done as best I can do yeah. to live a life of Christ and to learn and explore. But the church being open to who I was, mm -hmm. giving me an opportunity to explore my gifts, giving me an opportunity to learn how to preach and direct the choir and play the drums and usher and, and yeah. you know, deacon and all of those yeah. things. The church was an incubator and the church was a place where I felt accepted. So I think the key for you know, young people, your children, mm -hmm. is for them to feel accepted. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the challenge for churches today. Yeah. I want as many people to see this film as possible, but especially those in the church. Yeah. The church has got to change. Yeah. The church has got to change. It's got to be a place of love and acceptance where all truly are welcome, not just in word, but also in deed. I love that. Well, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> you. you said it's your first acting gig. I, I, I foresee more happening uh, you did okay. so well, okay? So you're a prophet too, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank I you. Love it. Our country is a dark and divided place, but now there's hope and it's spreading. This is your home, and I want you to tell all your friends about it.